New politics for me smells um, and tastes of the practical. It's about implementation. It's about getting your hands dirty. One hundred years after the Russian Revolution of 1917 and almost ten years after the financial crisis that drove a stake of austerity through many of our surviving social democracies, this week on The Laura Flanders Show we talk about alternatives. Alternatives to both Soviet-style state socialism and Wall Street-style financial capitalism. What might the movements look like that take us somewhere different? This week on The Laura Flanders Show, the place where the people who say it can't be done take a back seat to the people who are doing it. Welcome. In the last couple of years, I've been part of an initiative promoted by the Transnational Institute in Amsterdam, but incorporating activists and organizers from all over the world in a conversation about what they call new politics. If the Russian Revolution is what factory workers and peasants came up with to challenge inequality under industrial capitalism and feudalism, and social democracies with their taxes and social programs were what liberals in the 20th century came up with to deal with inequality under financial, corporate, global capitalism, what might activists in the 21st century come up with to create a world that is less exploitative, less extractive, where power is more equally shared? And what might the movements look like that get us to that place? In the winter of 2017, I was part of a meeting in South Africa that pulled together many participants in TNI's new politics think tank. This week on the show, we're going to share some of what was exchanged there in the way of ideas, experiences, and aspirations. Welcome to the program. We're facing a deep sort of metabolic rift between capitalism and the sort of planetary life support system. And at the same time, we're facing this sort of uh, deep political crisis in the sense that you have all these far-right types emerging, you have this falling public trust in uh, representative institutions, etc., etc. Not Republicans, not Democrats, something else. That's new politics. For me, it's a synthesis of the best of the old politics and also a creative approach to um, new forms of political organizing and ideas that are coming out of the younger generation all over the world. Actually, in a way, the new politics for me is about what we are for. I think old politics doesn't resonate, it doesn't speak to people's hearts nor minds, and so I think that's one of the main reasons why we need something different. The main challenge for the left will be to sort of reinvent this notion of a post-capitalist society and to gather public support behind the idea that Yes, it is possible to create something non-capitalistic. I live in Barcelona, one of the uh, worldwide references on new politics. We have been able to uh, build uh, an alive alternative economical uh, scene connected to Commons collaborative economy and also to gain the government in the city through the uh, citizens' candidature called Barcelona Com. After the global justice movement, there were several waves of uh, social mobilization around things like uh, housing. Uh, which one of the, its uh, leaders now is the mayor of uh, Barcelona, uh, Ada Colau, also around the environmental issues and uh, also another element is around the free culture and the digital commons. How far internet brings a new possibility of um, generation and, and access to knowledge. Uh, the creation of ideas, you know, uh, the, this uh, uh, debates and, 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 fi and, and philosophical debates uh, also stems from can ideas be private? 
can somebody uh, say that we can put you know uh, what they call intellectual property you know can idea be the property of some of, of, of a private institution so this is how the technology and uh, tech, the information technology and have given a new dimension to the already existing desire to to live produce in common so what what's why new politics now okay uh, I would say that uh, first the, m the movement that uh, had the aspiration to change uh, society okay had it achieve its goal secondly uh, power is less and less within the people's hand and uh, with the what we call globalization neo globalization process power is more and more removed from the nation state so there's a need for people and citizens to recapture power and secondly the the the, the political system that we inherited in my country and in many countries which is based on representational democracy no more uh, fulfill this uh, need uh, to to express the people's power people's feeling people's and need uh, uh, the way they want the economy to be run. This commons frame that um, I'm starting to see emerge offers a very, it's a very broad church, but it offers a, a sense of vision of the public, public space, the people space. It's about the humanism. I think we need to put a humanism at the center of any kind of project that we're trying to develop today because that is what I think resonates with people, what it means to live a human life. The question around social relations, specifically in relation to the ecology, in relation to nature and specifically to women, um, converge in a particular way than before. I'm here to co-create uh, a new politics the people who love lives, who love nature and who are tired of and who recognize that um, the decline of our society, the destruction of life uh, is uh, strictly re uh, linked uh, to capitalism, to this uh, overproductive model, economic model, to this overconsumerism society, to exploitation, to the patriarchy to extractivism, etc. What I see as a basic step uh, into the um, creation of a new politics is about uh, first uh, to decolonize our mind. We have uh, lived in a capitalist exploiting system uh, for years and uh, it has infested our mind. The ecofeminist movement have been talking about body and land and fish and sea and oceans for a very long time. And perhaps it's that that has re-articulated itself in, in new forms. Social reproduction is uh, about uh, regeneration of life. You know, people, women, doesn't have access to seed doesn't have access to land and we and when you cannot grow vegetable when you cannot grow the basic needs things for animal for human beings to be alive then you're destroying life there there is a need for that reproduction we can't have one idea that that's part of the problem the homogenization of all people mm -hmm. the domination of all people a narrative which uh, which is about recovery which is that we must all look smell talk be the same no. and and <laughs> and that that is through market relations. And I think that social reproduction and social relations is at the key of transformation and not, not as in just as people, but we are nature in that sense. We're not uh, mm -hmm. as, as separate from. To implement uh, a new social economic global order, it has to be, you know, creative. It has to be dynamic. It has to respond to people's needs and uh, in respect with nature, with regards to its limitation, etc., etc., and uh, this process is uh, it's uh, permanent. It's permanent because the world is not uh, 
our life is not static it's dynamic and there are new challenges coming there are new contradictions coming so being able to sit together to you know uh, work together in a par participatory democratic way is a good start i think that you know a part of the alternative has to be to 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 sh i mean i say shrink the economy shrink its power shrink its weight shrink its shrink its dominance over mm. our our, our household etc if we're talking about economy in a different way which is sharing bartering uh, caring etc then i think that that's 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 sort of fundamental if we do not reimagine re a new society a new way of life a new society with women nature at the basis we are failing we'll be failing again just like the previous system has failed A break with the past, drawing on the past, taking us into the future. And constantly seeking for new ways um, of doing things, how we interact, how we relate, where we do it, how we do it, where the power relations lie, and so on. It's not only about standing in front of a building with a placard. It's really about how do you keep on moving the struggle forward uh, through deep, insightful interrogation, but also through uh, politicized understanding of solidarity and also of harvesting our traditions of resistance. Most of the women that I engage with, they are involved in agriculture and they organize their lives from the, you know, the, their relationship with nature, their pos the possibility of them to produce the food they have, they want to eat, and to produce uh, the other means of living which they need. Actually, we live in a reality where we don't uh, have the state to take care of ourselves. We don't have the state institutions to deliver what we want, what we need. And it's the people, it's the women particularly, who organize the community life. I discovered the comments through the internet and how far uh, through the new technologies we can uh, collaborate in order to create uh, knowledge commons that uh, democratize the access to knowledge. But then I, jump, I jump into the urban commons because I think the technology is also uh, shaping the conditions of possibility of both the enclosement of the commons or actually the rising of the commons in the, at the city council. Yeah, I think what, have, what is in common I, w from my understanding is that people are in control of decision making of what is important for them, what do they need, not as individuals but as a collectivity as well. For me the core elements of both cases or any typology of uh, uh, commons is uh, on the one hand there is a community of people self-organized mm -hmm. in order to uh, uh, collaboratively produce a resource mm -hmm. and, and they, they govern the process and they collectively own the process. This is the first characteristic that is based on uh, principle of the commons. Another characteristic is that what they produce uh, tend to uh, uh, be connected to social challenges, mm -hmm. be connected to uh, um, uh, people's uh, needs. And so the agenda is very much connected to the general interest. Uh, and also uh, connected to the general interest, is interest by considering the externalities of what the current economical system many times doesn't consider the environmental externalities mm. and impacts. In contraposition, commons tend to have much more present the, the general interest by considering the environmental impacts or other type of impacts that uh, might, might have been considered when uh, organizing the production. We fail uh, to think what can be common because we fail to define development on the right way. We use a concept of development which is a Western concept which is designed in thinking what is the standard that the world wants. 
not really what relates to the people who are involved in the process. What happens is that then we have contradictions because people create expectation with the concept that is given of development, with a bigger picture that is given of progress. But in practice, people don't experience that progress. They experience invasion of, uh, of, uh, of words, of ideas, of, uh, of uh, a, a possibility of changing their life to something better. But in practice, this is not happening. And it ends up, uh, uh, rea they end up realizing that uh, this development is a myth. forms of self-governance, new models of solidarity economics, and new ways of looking after each other and creating sanctuary with respect and dignity for one another and for the planet. So it's politics in, in the sense of the people. It's not politics necessarily in terms of parties and institutional politics. It's about, it's about uh, organized people, people organizing to govern themselves. It's fundamental for us to be thinking about new forms of resistance and thinking and communicating and being in the world, which I think is essential to a new politics. Not just about the getting to power and dealing with power, but what do we do after taking power? Because I think that's the lesson of the last 30, 40 uh, years of struggle, that if we don't think now about what happens uh, beyond the question of coming to power, uh, we are going to find ourselves uh, very short. We had a program that was called Bibir Bien, Living Well. And we said we don't want to uh, live better than others. We want uh, to live well in harmony between humans and in harmony with nature. What we wanted to do was to move to be an agroecological country. We could have moved to renewable energy, to ecotourism, uh, to a very different kind of, uh, of um, we don't want to use the word development, but of vivir bien. But we didn't do that. Why? Because we were not conscious, because, no, because we were captured by the logic of power. So I think that when we speak about uh, a new politics, it means the, the mistake was, yes, we wanted to do what the traditional left wanted to do also, always. Take the state, take the power, and then from the state, uh, do good things for the people. And I come to the conclusion that that will fail. Cities had a program which it was responsive to people's needs by back then. Um, the problem was that we didn't have uh, concrete action plans. How are we going to implement these policies? I realized at some point that there are several certain limits in what we can achieve if we do politics in a traditional way. Uh, it seems that com complex societies cannot be governed anymore by authoritarian, uh, in an authoritarian or hi hi hierarchical way. We have to distribute the decision-making processes and the government could have, and the leadership could be a facilitator of this democratic process because if we do not take in into consideration and we do not bring in different perspectives, our, decision, our decisions will be wrong. I, I think that the strategy is more complicated than what we thought. It's not to take state power and transform the world or, or society, but at the same time to look for state power to build our counter power even for the revolutionary leaders that are going to go into the government. Uh, so it is a, a strategy that has to combine uh, two, elements. two elements, two key elements. And, uh, and uh, I think that maybe this is the way to sort out this, this deep problem that we have seen in many places.
the left needs to find ways in which to relate to movements that's happening today. Any radical work all the time, everywhere, um, is a form of, of activism and activism has to happen and does happen with um, intellectual engagement, organic enga engagement. The crisis has generated opportunities for us not only to look back and immediately focus on why we are where we are, but really to imagine a different kind of future. I started my activism um, when I was in college. By the time I got to almost my last year in university was the killing of Trayvon Martin and then the acquittal of George Zimmerman. And I think myself, I was situated in this really interesting point in history where a lot of young like black mill millennials were understanding that there is no protection for us. We're gonna mm -hmm. have to self-determine, we're gonna have to figure out how to do this. Mm -hmm. And then we became a part of this longer legacy of like black self-determination. Um, and so it's been since that time that we've been trying to not only critique the state, um, but also learn how to provide alternatives. This project of self-determination is important because it gives us an, an opportunity to break those things down, mm -hmm. recognize our part in perpetuating our own oppression mm. and doing better. In order for us to build these alternatives, which is going past the theory, which is going past the dreaming and imagining, is to really take some deep reflection and some introspection on how we manifest these social hierarchies and how can we break those down in order to build. Like, there's so mm -hmm. much to dismantle internally. Yeah. Um, at the same time as, you know, opposing the state and, and pressuring the state in order for us to even like actualize these things that we dream and we know in our hearts are true. My nigga raising his daughter, I do this shit for people who never get out, people who never get hurt cause they don't get the clout, city don't want us to sprout, scared of us swinging but really ain't bothered by shouts, ah! So I organized the Black Youth Project 100 which is under the, the larger Black Lives Matter movement. We're understanding that in terms of breaking down these social hierarchies, we have to be able to express those values in the way that we interact. We have a very large emphasis on black queer leadership, black mm -hmm. queer leadership, gender, gender nonconforming trans leadership. Um, and that when we talk about an issue, we're not just talking about it in terms of one particular group. I think liberation movements were kind of like a sing single issue movement. And mm -hmm. I think this is, there's now a clear refusal from our side in saying, you will not write out people from history. It's breaking that Eurocentric mold that we've been formed in. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do it. I know other of us do it. We all kind of go into that mold because this is how we've been socialized. Mm -hmm. But if we can go back to a more authentic understanding of how we're connected to each other, how we're connected to the land, you know, mm. like that is the way in which we can find a path forward by going a little bit backwards. For me, it's important that we continue growing mm -hmm. and continue learning. For me, it's about the learning because I don't think growth happens without learning, or in the absence of learning. Um, and I think where we're headed is building more transnational, transnational yeah. links mm -hmm. um, and solidarity, strengthening transnational solidarity um, because the fight is getting bigger and uglier and it's coming closer and closer and closer to all of us. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it would be silly for us to wait until it got to our doorsteps. The piece that I'm resonating with at this point and being in this work is how deeply personal revolution is. If it's not in your heart, if it's not in your home, then it's not going to go into these external things. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes because it's so deafening, the outside external force of like the state or the systems or the government that we get focused there, but I think I'm learning more and more that if I can't look in the mirror and see like the blemishes on my face and be able to work with those and understand how I can change those things, then I'm not going to be able to have impact outside. So I think our movement is needing a lot of healing, a lot of truth, a lot of discomfort so that we can grow like growing pain so that we can actually get to a revolutionary point. Do progressive forces have to change strategy? Well, I'll answer that question personally. My grandparents were both members of the Communist Party. My parents 
were both supporters of social democratic parties. I've been part of social movements all my life. I've never felt that they were quite political enough, and I've never felt the parties met my needs socially, were socially conscious enough. So do we have to change? I think we all have to change. We have to come up with some blend that enables us to bring our whole selves to the project. If all of this doesn't come together, bringing together the question of the commons and the social, the question of the gender and other sources of, of diversity and the reproduction world, and the, and the much more environmentally friendly and circular uh, modalities of production, if all of this doesn't come together, only with one piece we will not arrive very far. To citizens of the United States and the world, let us try to join us in this journey. Regardless of whether or not we think there should be such a thing as a new politics or whether or not it means anything to me personally, I think what we're experiencing is the development of a new politics anyway. So we have to engage with that. We have to be uncompromising. We have to be uh, committed and courageous to the fact that we as human beings also understand how important it is for all of us to live lives of freedom.